the one thing I love about family businesses is they talk with such passion and I don't think you get near it at all when you know when you talk when you when you work in a big corporate organization I think you'll find that all, all of our speakers will, will talk from the heart with a passion that no one else can feel and I think that is what's so commendable um, this whole idea of legacy is truly important because family firms are thinking you know 10 20 30 <laughs> next generations and the you know, they're thinking for the long term. That's got to be a good thing for everybody. Um, so, um, so thank you for that, Henry. That, that's fantastic. Our next speaker, um, uh, we've known Paul for a few years now, who is amazing. And you've probably been to his garden centre in Seven Oaks. It is absolutely, truly <laughs> beautiful, fantastic. He's third generation. Um, his great grandfather started it. And um, let's ha let's see a different perspective from from Paul. So, Paul, please take the floor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm often asked to uh, come to groups to talk about uh, the longevity of our business being third generation, and uh, we're over 100 years old now. But uh, in the speak lineup of speakers today, I'm very much the newbie. Um, I do have a, a, a few notes here. We were comparing the size of the back of the our envelopes uh, this morning, but uh, mine's bigger than than Henry's. Um, <laughs> I'm here this morning with my wife, Carol, who has been a, a, a real rock and um, uh, great help uh, over the, the last few years. And we've been through uh, a few ups and downs uh, in the more recent uh, years. I, I would like to say, I know Anita often says Chatham House rules uh, apply here. And uh, there are some things uh, in what I'm going to say that, uh, uh, this, that, that would apply to. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm hoping to give you a little bit of uh, a background into the, uh, the family and the business history, um, a few of the pitfalls so that you can learn from our mistakes, uh, and then a few of our secrets of success. Um, first of all, though, um, who has been to Cooling's on, on Rushmore Hill in Knockholtz? Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> large proportion. Uh, next question, who has been to Cooling's Green and Pleasant? That's the one with the nature trail, the wallabies, and the uh, uh, nature trail. Oh, yep. Less. Okay, that's interesting. So we've still got a bit of marketing to do there to uh, <coughs> get that message across properly. And uh, third question, uh, which normally gets even fewer hands up, who remembers Coolings when we used to be in Chislehurst? Oh, that's a higher proportion than uh, I normally get in uh, groups such as the size. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, grandfather started the business. Um, he went into the post office at the age 14, uh, told him to get a good, uh, a sensible job. Uh, but at 19, he was bored. He uh, kept his day job, but in the middle of the day when postman had time off, he rented some land, borrowed a plough, and started uh, into horticulture. That was over 100 years ago. And the wonderful thing about uh, families and businesses with a heritage as long as ours is that there are lots of stories. And you know some of them are actually true. <laughs> so uh, succession planning um, was an unknown term really in the 1950s when my dad started into training uh, and joining his dad uh, in the family business. Uh, at the time there wasn't much discussion about succession, um, it was just assumed that dad would come into the, the family business. He was an only child, uh, no competition, straight in really, nice, nice and easy. Uh, and the succession issue wasn't discussed. It was just assumed that uh, uh, he, he would uh, come in, join the business, and the actual takeover uh, from one generation to another didn't really uh, have any significant uh, impact around the dining room table because his father, my grandfather, died when Dad was 32 years old. So um, thrust into it, at the deep end really. Uh, it was a small business at the time um, and Dad took it on and really uh, Dad is the, is the entrepreneur uh, uh, of the family. He took opportunities as they arose, as he saw them he acted upon those uh, opportunities. So reinvesting uh, into the business, increasing the range of products offered and even to the extent of, of buying neighbouring patches of land. The small site in Chislehurst, which is now opposite, well, it still is opposite, um, the same with Car Park, if anybody knows that, uh, was a, just over a one acre site when we came to sell that, made up of seven different property transactions. Buying the neighbouring house with the garden, selling on the house with less garden. 
and things like that to uh, generate a more, uh, more of a usable asset. Um, in the 70s, bought a much larger plant production nursery um, that had gone bust as a result of the 1970s uh, oil crisis. Um, the site in Chislehurst was sold for housing in the late 80s, again taking advantage of the opportunity, housing market boom, and um, at that stage the profitability of that business was such that it was ranked in one of the trade magazines as having the highest profitability per square metre of any garden centre in the UK. So a good place to, to be in. Um, and that was, as I say, the, the, the height of the property boom. Uh, the company that bought it uh, at the top of the uh, housing boom in the 80s suffered dramatically when the uh, market changed a few weeks after we got our money. And uh, two subsequent developers who bought them out also went pop uh, over that one deal. Um, so luck does play a part in businesses as well. Um, Dad was aged 54, had a pot of money, he could have retired. Having said that, rollover relief, again the tax man, uh, does have a, a bearing on a lot of uh, generational changes. And rollover relief meant that reinvesting in another business made sense. Uh, it, it, the, the new business came with a substantial discount. And family discussion, yes I was interested, and uh, Dad decided he would reinvest his money by buying the site on Rushmore Hill in Knockholt, which obviously the majority of you know. Reinvestment of profits into the business uh, has continued. I joined the team in uh, 1990, just as we opened the doors there. I was age 25 at the time. Turnover, 600,000. Mum and Dad said they work for a few more years, get the business up and running, and then they retire. And that, to me, seemed like a good, sensible business plan. Uh, fast forward 15 years, turnover doubled, doubled again, and nearly doubled again. Um, through this process of continually uh, reinvesting in profits, listening to the customers, find out what they want, what they don't want, and um, keeping a fairly narrow path, doing what we're good at. Winning numerous awards, um, but by the time Dad was 70, still quite heavily involved in the business, and this idea of uh, working for a few years and then retire and starting to enjoy life hadn't really happened, and that was a, a, a lesson to me. Heart attack, triple bypass, um, all these things. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Got me, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but at this stage, again, taxing and uh, the inheritance tax regulations meant that uh, it was more tax efficient for him to keep the shares in the business uh, so that I would inherit them free of tax rather than him give them to me and then hope that he'd last another seven years. Um, yeah, when you have a heart issue, it does put a different perspective on things. And um, yeah, he, he didn't want me to buy him out because that again would have different um, uh, effects on the, uh, on the taxation. Um, but moving on in years, your perspective on life changes and uh, someone who's now, uh, is now 82 uh, this year, um, you become more cautious and uh, going back a few years now wasn't too keen on investing half a million pounds into 10 acres beside our site that would have allowed uh, potential uh, increase and now we really desperately need extra space um, only reluctantly agreed to the purchase of our nearest competitor when shown that uh, the investment could return 13 percent on his bid uh, as we bought the, um, the, the, the ground, um, the freehold as well. Um, um, 2013, again, two disastrous years for our second site, the smaller site, uh, meant that it faced closure. Uh, the loss of 34 jobs. I'm sorry, I couldn't handle that. So uh, an opportunity for Carol and myself. Um, we took that part of the business and we now own that 100% uh, um, still uh, shareholding, obviously, in the, the main part of the business. Business now uh, in a much better place. That was a, f a couple of years ago. Um, the exec team um, 
because my brother is a, a non-exec director, so he lives still up in uh, Warwick. And um, the exec team working hard, been with the, pe the, the business a long time, uh, 20, 25 years of service, uh, <coughs> uh, MD and uh, Ops Director. We've learned how to present the figures to Dave in such a way that we still get to prevent, pr uh, produce the long-term investments uh, and sometimes there's a little bit of massaging of those figures to um, allow the business to, to carry on. And 5% growth last year, which for retail business is quite acceptable. Cooling Green and Pleasant, our own little business, uh, we've been thoroughly uh, immersed in the last uh, two and a half years. We even put more money in because we have a belief in there. Uh, those 34 staff members have now increased to 48 and 10% growth last year. Currently between the two sites, over 7 million turnover and 188 staff uh, rely on us for their income. Uh, secrets of success? There are no secrets really, it's all quite open. Have good people on the team, top quality products to give an enjoyable experience to the customers coming through the door and assuming that we've got that bit right, they'll go away and tell their family and friends that Coonings is the place to come for all their gardening requirements. Um, the old style strategy of right product, right place and right price, um, that still stands in, in, in many ways but at Coonings we tell people what they should be planting in their garden, what furniture they should be having uh, on, on their uh, patio, but we also tell them how to get the best out of it uh, and what good value it is too. At 17 and 15, our next generation are showing little interest at the moment, too early to tell. Uh, in five years' time, if there's still little or no interest, then we'll start the process of so whether that be to a trade buyer in five years' time, don't know. I'd like to think possibly management buyout or staff um, company. And um, quick plug for an Eastern Family Business Play conference. There was a speaker there, was it last year or two years ago? I can't remember. Um, talking about the transfer of businesses into staff ownership. And uh, that was a, a, a real uh, thought provoking presentation. So. Uh, and this is both a lot to answer for. A lot of good ideas there. So that's uh, Coolings in a nutshell. Um, yeah, hope it's been Thank interesting. You. Thank you so much.